So there's this musical called Passing Strange. A coming of age story of a young African American who is referred to as youth in his journey in search to find the real and make it big as a musician in Europe. The music was written by Stu and Heidi Rodewald. Rodewald? Rodewald. And the lyrics and book is also written by Stu. And he also is an actor within the musical itself, hence why he's also on the playbill and also advertised as Stu's musical. I have to be honest, I don't like musicals, but this one is the, one of the very few musicals that I was fully able to engage with in its ideas and the complexity of the topics it tackles. Themes of identity, authenticity, and even grief was unique and surprised me to the truest sense of the word. Even in the way that this piece is staged, every aspect of this musical is thought through. So it's hard to compare it to other kinds of musical, especially the big spectacle pieces we commonly associate the genre with. Passing Strange is a very unique musical, and even if you go out not liking it, I think you'll still be able to recognize the density and complex nature that is Passing Strange. We just had sex. There's nothing sleazy about a natural reflex. It's nice and easy, no need to crane your necks. It's all cool breezy, baby. What's a little bedroom traffic? Evening news is pornographic. We I swear, guys, this is serious and brilliant. Just hear me out. So much of what interested me were the ideas about identity, more importantly, black identity and specifically middle class black identity, and how these ideas were presented on stage. At the start of the show, it's obvious that youth shows a particular disdain for superficial identities. Why are normal everyday things like sheer agony for you? Because normal everyday things are phony. Why do I have to change? In E. Patrick Johnson's book, Appropriating Blackness, Johnson cites the documentary Black Is, Black Ain't by filmmaker Marlon Riggs, who compares blackness, or the act of being black, to gumbo to illuminate the multiplicity of blackness. Gumbo is a dish which ingredients consist of whatever the cook wishes it to have. It's symbolic for the diversity within the black community, and the secret to blackness, like gumbo, is what binds it together. Everything that you can imagine can be put into gumbo. Shrimp, crayfish, sausage, alligator sausage, pork sausage, crab. What does black mean? It seems very difficult to define in any absolute sense what it means to be black. The documentary argues that when black Americans attempt to define what it means to be black, they set boundaries of the possibilities of what blackness can be, which echoes the struggle that youth in the musical face. Stu, who also acts as the narrator of the story, plays an important part in how black identity is expressed within the characters. Cue music. Sunday morning, South Central LA, 1976. Mother stands in doorway. Youth is sleeping. Wake up, pillow hugging son of mine. It's your turn to rise and shine. For too long now, you've been on the wrong side of right. I ain't starting how late you was up last night. Lord, have mercy, child. Look at your head. Look just like a feather bed. Now let go that pillow. Leave that dangerous dream be. Jump out of that bed and come a churchin' with me. She drops the Negro dialect and speaks in her natural voice. It's such a beautiful Sunday morning. The dialect or even the black identity is seen as almost something that black people put on. And this idea of putting on a black identity is supported when mother is criticized by youth when asked why she doesn't go to the church anymore. I don't let no one black folk would have done without the church because there ain't nothing in this ugly, unforgiving world and I mean nothing like a good black church. Then why don't you ever go? Church bitches, give me the blues. Lord, look at these shoes. A 
As she's getting ready for church, the miming of her church clothes symbolically represents the fake identity she is putting on to display her own faith. While Stu and the band in the background emphasizes the idea that in black church, faith is but something people parade for display. Got real estate, college funds, jobs with benefits, homeowners, debutantes. This place is as phony as it gets. So if blackness or acting black is something that can be put on, what exactly does that mean? E. Patrick Johnson cites Martin Favor's argument that authentic blackness is most often associated with the folk or the working class black, and that art forms like folklore and blues are often associated with the black working class and viewed more as genuinely black. Ladies and jerks, we are the stereotypes! One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four! I'm at war with Negro mores, I'm at war with ghetto norms, my mother grade in Mr. Medeiros' class. But you're still a bunch of slaves, and you're driving me insane, cause the whip across your shoulder is connected to your brain. There are some sandwiches in the den for when you kids get hungry. Wow! His music choice is not associated with music that we typically associate with black musicians by this definition. So when youth leaves to Amsterdam in the pursuit of the real, and to get big off of his music, he is annoyed when people assume the genre of the music that he creates. Do you play jazz? Do you play the blues? Do you live in a fucking windmill? Do you wear clog shoes? <laughs> this association of folk with black authenticity renders the black middle class as inauthentic. There is a specific moment in this musical where youth moves to Berlin because, well, I thought everything was all right. It's hard to write songs when you're already in paradise. Ah, oh, so I see the problem. It's like I can't get too comfortable, otherwise I'll forget all the shit there is to complain about. He got the case of the writer's block, and he blames being too comfortable as the reason he left. It's good you're going to Berlin. Lady that offered all of those luxuries and hospitality. Eh, don't need it because real musicians struggle. And since he doesn't have any plate to capitalize off of, he's not a real artist, so better go to Berlin. Say your song sounded like this. Don't try to hide the truth is inside. <laughs> and then you heard this. That's inside it, says that I! it would have to make some kind of impression on you now, wouldn't it? Or oh, in other words, his song was ugly, cold and cracked, but Venus had something our hero lacked. Courage to bleed. Venus gave him speed. Oh yeah, they do harder drugs in Berlin too. <laughs> but what I most want to draw your attention to is at this point in the musical where the legitimacy of youth artistry comes into question. Please, give us one reason why we should allow you to stay. Uh, well, uh, uh, because I'm black? What's, What's that? that? Yeah, <clears throat> Mr. May 68, do you know what it's like to be the object of oppression living under police occupation in the ghetto? He did not. <laughs> His police occupied ghetto looked more like your friend Terry stopped by again in that brand new Datsun 240Z. He's making good money, and he's not even in a game. Well, let, let me ask you this, Mr. Know-it-all. Do you know what it's like to hustle for dimes on the mean streets of South Central? Nobody in this play knows what it's like to hustle for dimes on the mean streets of South Central. His mean streets looked more like... Oh, I ran into Sherry at the Arts and Crafts Fair. Boy, has she turned into a beautiful young lady. And as you know, she is not a crack hoe. Wow! 
fascinating is that youth is middle class and even being introduced as such, but all of the characteristics and attributes he identifies with in Berlin are not his own. Some could say that he is, yes, appropriating a certain kind of blackness, black folks passing for black folks. And countless of real world artists have done this too. I don't see my son as the notorious big, biggie smalls or whatever. He's just Christopher to me. I don't see that youngster, he might try. But as big as he is, I'll say cut it out. Don't even try. He's not um, what everybody perceives him to be. He has to portray an image out there. The tough image. We used to fuck when the landlord dissed us. No heat. Wonder why Christmas missed us. Contrary to what he writes about, you know, Christmas missed us. We used to live in a one room shack. Christmas never missed us. Let me put it this way. He was wearing polo shirts when no one else knew what thought polo was a game. This is my baby, I guess. Um, it's a 2004 Acura TSX. It's a nice first car for like a team. I guess, as opposed to a Mercedes or BMW. I think that's pretentious, personally. But hey, if you have the money to buy it, then feel free. <laughs> Enough about the car. Let's go inside. Hey, Bobby. Yeah. Uh, me and my grandma have a little thing where my mom doesn't let her eat chocolate. But, uh... My, my grandma slides me a little extra cheddar on the side, and uh, I make sure she gets her, her daily chocolate dose. That's so. my grandson. Thought it from the bottom, now we here. All black people in the ghetto are quoted to saying that if they had the money, they wouldn't be living there. So why do we romanticize black lower class struggle as authentic blackness? And lastly, you need to blacken up a bit. Blacken up. Yeah. Like. Not so much that you become unhirable or anything. <laughs> but, you know, you kind of act too white. You're not black enough for me. Put a little soul in your stroke. Blackness is something that can be appropriated. Is it also possible to appropriate whiteness? We'll continue the analysis of Passing Strange in my next video about acting white. But before that, I leave you with the words from Bell Hooks from the documentary Black Is, Black Ain't. It seems to me that we would do well as black folks to replace the notion of unity with the notion of communion. The root meaning of it would suggest that our union is fundamentally based on a notion that we must be willing and able to communicate with one another. Because I think that so often when black folks evoke unity, again, it's the flattening out of differences, the sweeping certain things under the rug so that we can appear to be alike, that we hold one stand, that we have one position. I think communion and its connection to the notion of community um, might give us greater strength and possibility. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this content, I would appreciate if you like and subscribe and stay tuned for my next part that's coming up. All right, see you then.